welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africa's public procurement of new electricity generation is continuing to face delays. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the reasons and the implications. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. The seventh renewables procurement round has not been launched yet. Why? Yeah, earlier in the year, the, um, Gwede Mantash, the Minister of Energy, said we were going to launch this round in about June, I'd say, because we had a very big failure, bid window uh, six, uh, when we tried to procure bigger amounts, 4,200 megawatts, and uh, that we only ended up procuring 1,000 megawatts. So there was a, some feeling of urgency to try to get the next bid window ra uh, round underway. Um, and then it was delayed to September, and now we hear from the electricity minister, Kossi and Sarumakopa, that it's December, but the IPP office itself is not committing to any firm date for the launch of the round. The size of the round was about probably 5,000 megawatts, wind and solar, um, so we still don't have any firm date. We know that we continue to be in a period of load shedding. This has been the most intense load shedding year ever, and we need to be adding new capacity. Yes, we need to recover where we can the Eskom plants, but they are still underperforming. They are improving and we've seen the Kusile units coming back and helping to stabilize the system. But fundamentally we have a structural shortage of energy in the system. Uh, we need to be adding uh, at a much faster pace and at the moment it's a, bit, it's, it's a big disappointment that the public procurement is just not gathering any rhythm and momentum. This is part of a pattern that has developed since the resumption of procurement in 2020. Yes, so the, 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 that really is part of a pattern. When I go back to the extreme state capture years, where uh, the Eskom leadership at the time decided that uh, they would no longer uh, contract with RPPs. That was around 2014 that there was a bid window, bid window four. And uh, in, by 2015, they basically made it clear they're not going to be contracting. And the argument was that they had now surplus capacity from the coal plant in the system and there was no need for this, this expensive renewable energy anymore and variable renewable energy and we're just not going to contract with it. It was against the policy of the time even, uh, but at the, there was also no effort really made to get the ESCOM leadership to abide by the policy. So we had a seven years uh, period of total collapse of public procurement. And uh, we started to see a resumption of load shedding during that period. So we, as South Africans, knew that that argument that uh, that the load shedding was behind us and there was surplus. We knew that was uh, inaccurate or false. Yet it took a long time. You know, uh, the, the Zoom administration was eventually um, voted out in the ANC, and uh, immediately when the Suramaposa administration came in, we we did sign the bid window for procurement, but then it took quite a long time to finalize the integrated resource plan of 2019. And only in 2020, as you said, did we resume with bid window five. <coughs> and then uh, it felt like we were gonna get into a rhythm of regular yearly procurements. But what happened was those projects were bid at a time where, where the future changed very, substantially, so they bid very low prices, very aggressive prices, both wind and solar, the best we've ever seen. And then the Ukraine, uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine happened early in the following year. They hadn't concluded, um, they, uh, they, uh, they had, hadn't got to financial close, and all the prices changed massively under their feet, and they weren't able to, many of them, weren't able uh, to meet the prices that they bid, the tariffs had bid. So those projects, only some of them have crossed the line, a number of them have, and there's a, a number more that have signed legal commitments to reach uh, close before the end of December, but a lot of those projects didn't close. Then we had bid window six scaled up to 4,200 megawatts because of the shortage that was clear. I mean, then we were getting into intense periods of load shedding, and there were responses, uh, both wind and solar, and then at that point, the 3,200 megawatts available for wind was taken off uh, the table totally by Eskom. 
saying that the grid had been absorbed in the areas where those projects had bid. So the 23 projects that bid uh, did not, weren't even considered. So we only got the 1,000 megawatts of solar going through the system, and those projects, some of them are, are under construction. But again, not enough electricity, not enough energy coming into the system from this, so it's a big failure. So there was a lot of focus about how do we get ensure that bid window 7 doesn't face similar problems. And um, we saw Eskom changing its bid bidding rules uh, for, for budget quotes to the grid and uh, basically saying that you have to have show that your project is, um, is not, it's not going to be on a first come first serve anymore basis. It's going to be first ready, first served. It went to court, so there's been some to and froing around that. But in the meantime, Eskom also didn't finalise until very recently, only at the end of October, the grid capacity allocation uh, report, the update, and that only just came out now. And then there was also a lot of talk about the curtail curtailment framework that was going to accompany that to allow these places that have been theoretically absorbed from an Eskom perspective to maybe come in with the full knowledge that some of the electricity was going to be curtailed up to 10% maybe, which would unlock quite a lot of grid in places like the Western Cape, the Northern Cape and the Eastern Cape, all of which which are in the GCCA registered as zero. That still hasn't been provided. So basically the IPP office has not been able to launch the bid window 7 because those frameworks are not in place. Um, and we basically sitting in a situation where yes, things have improved because the Eskom plant is becoming available now it seems inevitable we're going to extend the life of this plant because it's just not enough electricity projects coming into the system. So it's a very, very big frustration that, that the, the, the rhythm that should have been established post the big disruption under the Zuma state capture years has just not resumed. And uh, there's a number of reasons and a number of moving parts, but basically uh, there hasn't been the will, it seems, to really get this going again. Is the procurement model still fit for purpose? I think that is a big question. We now have, a, fortunately, a bit of more of a multi-market situation where the IPP program is not, the public procurement program is not the only game in town. We had the, the liberalisation of the rules around private to private contracting and the, the elimination of any cap on the size of projects. So it was initially one megawatt, which is absolutely nothing. Uh, it was, there was a debate about whether it should be 50 megawatts, but at least that was raised to 100 megawatts when the president announced it. And now that cap has been lifted entirely. And we are seeing some of those projects coming through. They're also competing for grid in certain areas. That was one of the excuses given around a bid window six that bid budget quotes that the projects that bid under the public procurement round, they disallowed from actually getting a budget quote. They just get a cost estimate letter. And in the process, uh, private companies came with private PPAs and said, we'll want that, that connection and were given budget quotes. And Eskom therefore said that it was not available. So there was that mix up that should never have happened, either badly managed. But whether it's fit for purpose, it's hard to say. It's, we still need to procure. We still need to do public procurement. Um, and, but there's been a real lack of will, as I said, and a lack of agility from the IPP office to navigate this period, get Eskom's to give us the grid capacity uh, of what is available. Get it early. Get the rules around Katalman. Put pressure. There hasn't been enough pressure on Eskom to get these things out. We know that we've got an uh, energy minister who's not very supportive anyway, but that, that could have been a place where some pressure was placed, but I suppose they do fall under that ministry. And then uh, the electricity minister's been focused on Eskom, you know, which is really Yes, there's a lot of quick wins you can get short term, but it's not really going to take us to where we need to go. We can see the desperate call from business for decarbonized electricity. We need as many uh, renewable ele ele electrons into the system as possible, as early as possible to, to navigate this period that we're transitioning towards. We need a lot more shovels in the ground. And it's just the stop start is really, really difficult uh, for business on the other end, as well as, uh, you know, for all of us as South Africans who could actually have a lot more electricity starting to flow into our wires if we hadn't had all the stop-start. 
So where it all ends up, I think it will end up uh, with the, the, the Energy Electricity Regulation Amendment Act going through a bit more certainty around that. Probably the IPP office not falling under DMRE anymore. Probably either falling under the transmission company or somewhere else. So probably not fit for purpose in the long run. But it is not the only game, as I say, but it's a key game in town. And it really, we need to see a much more will and urgency out of that because we need electricity and we need clean electricity as quickly as possible. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.